can't complain was when I, I think I was going through things, not with just the deaths of my family members, but with people who, I mean, homeless people that I knew and people who just were not doing well at all and just, I mean, I woke up every day and I, I knew I was blessed. But I would wake up sometimes and complain about, oh, my feet hurt today. I said, oh, that's so ugly. And I was talking to Sammy a lot on the phone because we talk all the time. We talk every day, Sammy McKinney, my son. And I said, Sammy, it's just, I feel awful about the way I've been complaining about things like I'm an ingrate. And you realize that you don't have to go to the hospital for chemotherapy. You don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from. And you don't have to worry about if you have a pair of pumps to put on. Or I don't have to worry about anything. I can't complain. And so he wrote the song. And he said everything that I had to say. Because we sometimes, we block our blessings by being such mean Americans and such spoiled Americans and thinking that we have to have this amount of something to survive and we don't have to have it at all. Think about, I mean, think about people. Just think about people who don't have anything. And they get by every day. Mm -hmm. And they wake up the next morning. You know, so I don't have to have anything that I used to think I had to have. You know, so that song has given me a whole lot of uh, strength and a whole lot of, uh, what is that word? That song has made me realize who I am. Yeah. I mean, I, I lose so many people. I don't remember the years. I don't remember when. I don't remember sometimes even how. I mean, and I don't remember how they, like, at the last days when I would go to the hospital to see them, I, I was trying to remember how my sister Jackie looked near her, near the end, when she was really like thin, and I remember her in the bed, but she was always small, and then I was trying to, you know how you see those kids who are, um, the kids from India and um, the kids who are starving, and it says uh, $21 to save a kid or, or $21 a day, and it was a picture of a kid, and I remember I thought my sister looking like one of those kids, just really, really small and just drawn. And, and I think that's how she looks. And it just makes me feel just so awful all the time, knowing what pain she was in. Jackie and I fought more than my sister Barb and my sister Vivian, uh, my mother and my father. Me and Jackie were like <sighs> night and day. And she fought me because I didn't fight people. She kicked ass for me because I didn't kick it myself because she would see people disrespecting me as an artist and not giving me what she thought I should have because she thought that I was bigger than Barbara Streisand and all those people. She said, you are special and you don't even treat yourself like that. And so she would fight people and make me mad and embarrass me because she would be telling them that my sister is this and my sister is that. And I was saying, but no, I'm not all that. So we fought more about her loving me than anything. She was loving me too much. And I wasn't loving myself enough. And since she passed, I realized a lot of the stuff that she was fighting for was real. And I should have been kicking butt a long time ago. <laughs> Maybe I would be that super, super, super star that she always knew that I should be. And... She just was feisty, and my other sisters weren't feisty, and my mother and father weren't feisty. She would make me cry. We would get into fights. We fought in Atlantic City, and I choked her with my bra. I took my bra off and choked her with my bra strap. <laughs> she was real little, and I felt real bad because I was killing her with my bra. I said, you little witch with a capital B. I beat her down. And she was sick then, but I didn't know. But she was dying, and she wanted to die knowing that I would wake up. She wanted me to wake up before she died. And that's all she was fighting me for, so that I could just wake up and take my glory while I'm here. That's all. I won um, for burning with um, Lisa, Lisa Fisher. Fisher, who I love dearly. So I was happy to share it with her. You know, I didn't care which way it came. A lot of people were bitter because I had to share it. I said, Miss Thing can sing her butt off. I said, she'll probably never get another one, being like a Patti LaBelle. You know, let's let her have this moment because she's, she's great. She has a voice that people may never hear, you know, and it was fine with me. It, it was, look, I would have taken that nomination if they had nominated me man of the year. I don't care what they would have said. I'd have taken it, okay? <laughs> Group of the year, man of the year, 
I don't care. Just give me a Grammy. You know, but like I said, the Grammy is not all that. It's all the other stuff that comes that you can't be nominated for. You can't be nominated for respect at the airport. When I go to that airport, honey, I'm the queen of the airport. The children, they stop and say, hey. And the stewardess and the people who work behind the counters and the people in the supermarkets, they know me and they respect me. And they it's genuine. The Grammy stuff is not always so genuine. Because you don't know, like, the times that I was nominated, I didn't understand why. The times that I wasn't, I didn't understand why I wasn't. So that doesn't, that shouldn't make your life, you know, go around the Grammy nomination. Although it will hurt you a bit if you're not when you think you should be. I thought I should be, should have been uh, this year, but I wasn't. I wasn't, but I ain't crying. I can't dwell on not being nominated this year or on my own or things that you think should be. Because like I said, it ain't all that. You know, I have something that you can't be nominated for. You don't, you, you, you don't get an award for, for, for these things that I really think keep Patti LaBelle going. That love from, from the people out there. I mean, I love the way they love me. And I, I don't have a thing sitting on my... Oh, you didn't see my trophy room. I mean, I got trophies for days. It's stuff that, like I said, you can't buy and you can't be nominated for. And those are the things I live for. I live for going in the airport and people smiling at me. I mean, when they stop, I'm going to stay home. I'm not coming out. I'm not flying no more. Honest to God, it really turns me on. <laughs> it really turns me on. Better than a standing ovation. And those people at the airport, hey, Patty, like they know me. Hey, Patty, girl. <laughs> you know, they call me by my first name like they really know me. That's mm. special to me. You feel like having fun after your day is done. Working too hard, being stressed. Do the math, holding you out of the mix. They had to fight, fight, fight for me to do that. Actually, Al Heyman and my husband, I said, Edward, they begged me to do it. And I kept saying no. And the reason I, I said no is because I was afraid that if I got involved with the sitcom and uh, if I was blessed enough for it to have taken off, then maybe I would not rock and roll anymore. So I was afraid of becoming like a TV person and, and the concerts would be secondary. And with me, it's always singing first and then whatever second. And if it was, and I know once I sign a contract, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I was afraid in a way, but I said, I'll take a chance. Uh, and for whatever reason, it didn't last as long as it could have or should have. And so I was free to do, although while I was doing the sitcom, I was still doing my uh, concert touring. So it, it all ended up falling into place. And then I, I got comfortable with it and said, I'm happy about it and loving it. And then it was snatched away. But when it was canceled, I just looked at some of the stuff that was left on, the stuff that is on now, and was like, there were so many black sitcoms that were, uh, that had started the same time ours did, that were like knocked out really fast. And then you, you, you saw there were a few left. And I was happy about those few left. But then when you saw what they replaced it with, and everything replaced uh, our show, everything was white. You know, so I said, it's just basically a white world. And you just have to really realize that and, and understand what they're really <laughs> trying not to do. And that's trying not to give us a real chance. And you have to understand that. And whenever you get a chance to put your foot in that door, you put it in hard. Mm -hmm. And I put my foot in hard. Although I was not very happy with the way my character was going, she was kind of like not really focused. And I didn't have any like real uh, dilemmas and like a real woman situation thing, which we were about to write into. Because it, I was very much into the kids and all that. And, you know, if I came in that bar one more time and said, what's up? I would have shot myself, but we were about <laughs> to change all that. And we knew what we had to do, and before you knew it, it was over. But I was happy with the time that I had with it, because it was something that I fought that I shouldn't have never fought, because it was a learning thing for me. I, and I, I realized that I could become disciplined. So I was becoming a little actress, and they snatched it from me. I'm only joking, I wasn't becoming an actress. I was just having fun with this sitcom and it just ended. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know a real man. Uh -huh. Put on me. I was sure of myself and I was
for sure. I mean, at six, you better be sure about what you're singing. You better know it all. I was just so sure of everything, and it, I felt really good about the song and good about the way they were going to end up because I had a feeling about the way they were going to end up, although I'm a, a person who will never sing a song the same way twice. But I I knew what it was going to end up, and, and I felt it being positive, and it always been positive after 48 and stronger and I, I just feel stronger uh, vocally and physically and I can hold a note longer now that I'm older before it, 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 would, it would be held but not that long I can I can do it better now <laughs> you people uh, I always feel like a star because of what you do for me and you do a whole lot for me and it's like I said I hope to always do you right and respect you as much as you respect me so whenever you see me going to Hollywood pull me to the side and say Miss Patty you've gone there come on back girlfriend <laughs>